Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing an important topic in a dissertations and research. And a topic for today is research gap. The reason why we are embarking on, you know, a research is to identify a gap and fill those gaps. So as a student or as a researcher, if you're writing your PhD dissertations, writing your master's dissertations and undergraduate dissertations, the reason why you're writing those uh, research um, is to, you know, identify a gap in the body of new literature and fill those gaps in your research. If you're not identifying a gap or research gaps, it's just like you're repeating what other studies have done. So the first question is, what is a research gap? A research gap is a question or a problem that has not been answered by any previous studies or research within your discipline or fields. So the research gap is like a starting point for conducting further research. Without identifying a gap, you can't conduct further research. You need to understand what are the existing issues that, has been, that have been discussed, what are the existing results and findings, what are the existing discussions, the recent discussions in the body of knowledge for you to be able to see what you can do. So, in a nutshell, the purpose of, you know, literature review is not only to examine past available literatures or studies, but to be able to identify gaps in the literature. We need to see what have people done in this particular area of discipline. And from the understanding, you will be able to see what is yet to be done. So a research gap has specific gaps or deficiencies within a research topic. Now the first question that will cost to a mind as a researcher or as a student planning to write a PhD dissertation as a master's dissertations or undergraduate dissertation is how can I identify a research gap? The first way and one of the most efficient way to identify a research gap is to conduct a literature review. You need to download as many articles as possible related to your area of discipline. You need to see and read what people have written about the topic conduct an extensive literature review, read as many issues, current issues, publications as possible. And with that understanding, with the knowledge, you will be able to see the area that is yet to be done or the areas for further research. And the other ways that you can also identify research gaps is discussions with peers and mentors through class discussions, you know, among your, among your colleagues, among your friends, among your supervisors or friends, lecturers, you will be able to identify some issues, some novelty issues, attending seminars and conferences, and engaging with practitioners or stakeholders is also another way to identify research gaps. Now, we should also know the qualities of a good research gaps. Now, for every supervisor, you know, for every editors and reviewers, these are the things they looked at, you know, the relevance of the research gaps, the novelty of the research gaps, that's how significant is the research gaps, then the feasibility is a clear, the, the, the clarity of the research gap, the specificity, the timeliness, the originality, is it researchable, and overall, what is the importance of these research gaps? Now, in the next few minutes, we'll be looking at the types of research gaps. As a researcher, as a student, you know, planning to write a dissertation, you should be able to carve a niche for yourselves and identify the types of gaps that align with your dissertations. We have different types of research gaps. We have theoretical gaps, we have empirical gaps, we have methodological gaps, the practice gaps, the conceptual gaps, and the knowledge gaps. So these are the things we'll be looking at in the next few minutes. Now let's start with the theoretical gaps. Are these, you know, types of gaps pertain to theories, you know, or a conceptual framework within a topic or an area of discipline that requires further development or clarifications. And this might be as a result where existing theories, you know, fail to fully explain an observed phenomenon or whereby there's a new evidences that challenge the established theoretical framework. And one of the examples that we can use to explain this is the determinant of stock market returns. We've had the arbitrary pricing theories, we have the capital asset pricing models, 
you have the behavioral finance theory. So these theories are established as a result of the limitations of previous theories. Now, the other types of um, research gaps that we'll be looking at is the empirical gaps. And this is where, you know, there are some missing information, missing components of a phenomenon that can, you know, be addressed through empirical research. Uh, it is also occurs when the available data or empirical research is unable to answer some specific questions. When you when during the conduct of a literature review and you observe that the available information or data is unable to answer the specific question. So that is one of the ways you can identify empirical gaps. So they are often characterized by a lack of sufficient empirical studies in a specific information. And as such, that are needed to validate or expand upon existing knowledge. Now, let's look at the other types of uh, research gaps. Now, this is also an important um, types of research gaps. A lot of studies have used these methodological gaps, and I always encourage students and researchers to also, you know, align with this particular type of research gaps. So, a methodological gap is a gap in the research procedures and techniques employed in previous studies that may affect the precisions and the reliability of the findings. For example, we have what we call the ordinary least square methods, we have what we call the GLS generalized least square method, we have the vector error correction, vector error correction model, we have the autoregressive redistribution lag model, we have the Bayesian you know, panel regressions, we have panel data analysis. So there are different types of estimation techniques. And there are some there are limitations to these estimation techniques. So if one particular type of estimation techniques is used in previous studies, and there are limitations in that techniques in relation to the data set, then you can use another more you know estimation techniques supported with relevant literatures, and this is methodological gaps. So this type of gap arises when existing methods are inadequate for answering the research questions or when innovative approaches are needed to overcome the methodological limitations. Now, the other type of gaps is uh, practice gaps. And these practical gaps arises where there's a discrepancies between theory and practices. It occurs when there's a necessity to conduct further research to address these gaps and improve the applications of the theoretical findings into practices. So the conceptual gap is also another important research gap. This occurs where there are inconsistency in the ambiguity in the concepts, in the definitions, in the interpretations, resulting in confusions and misunderstanding. There is a particular concept, climate change. What is climate change? And these concepts are defined by different authors using different models, different measurement, different measures, and different metrics. And there are confusions. So if previous studies are using, for example, the metrics by A, and you, through the extensive literature review, you discover that there are other metrics or measures for a particular concept, that is what we mean by the conceptual gaps. So conceptual gaps leads to inconsistency or clear definitions and interpretations. So it also refers to an area within a field of study where knowledge is incomplete, missing, or lack of sufficient explorations. So the last type of um, a research gap is the knowledge gap. A knowledge gap is a difference between what is known and what is to be known about a specific topic. It can occur for various reasons, including insufficient or incomplete information, contradictory information, limited research, and outdated information. So whenever there are inconsistency in the results of previous studies, the studies of A you know, had a positive result, the study of B no, uh, negative result, the study of C is inconclusive. In that kind of situations, true, it is referred to as a knowledge cap. So whenever there are inconsistency, in the information and findings or limited research, it is called a knowledge gap. So in a nutshell, the essence of embarking on, a, on your academic exercise of dissertations, either PhDs or masters or undergraduates, is to identify a research gaps. 
you need to conduct extensive literature review to identify a gap. And in your own research, you have to fill up those gaps. By filling up those gaps, you are adding to the existing body of knowledge. You are contributing to the body of knowledge. Now, if you do not identify a research gap, you are repeating what other people have done. You are repeating what other studies have done. So by writing, by identifying a research gap in your dissertations, you are contributing. So it is expected for all researchers, all students, in your PhDs, masters, undergraduate, and also for publication purposes to identify a research gaps in your studies and also fill those gaps in your own research. Thank you for listening.